Hey everyone, this is Anthony, your DDI engineer. So today I wanted to do two things. I would like to show you how to configure XHA in BlueCat, and two, after we've set up XHA, let's discuss why or why not it's important to have it. So configuring XHA, but do we really need it? What is XHA or crossover high availability in BlueCat? It is a pair of two BDDSs. One is active and the other is passive and acts as a single server. The passive node monitors the active node and becomes the active primary if it determines that the active node isn't responding. XHA replicates DNS and DHCP from the active node to the passive node. All right, so let's log in. Default username and password is admin admin. I'm going to go to the servers tab, and as you can see, we have an additional BDDS labeled BDDS2. I update both names to be more generic. They are both managed. The profile, this is important, the profile is BDDS45. Now, it doesn't matter the type of BDS. Um, it could be a 4560. It could be an XMB. It doesn't matter as long as the profile is the same, okay? That piece is important. Now, uh, moving forward, host names, I uh, just gave it more of a generic name and added a different sub, sub zone to it. And then we can see that the service IP addresses are on the same network, or I guess you can't see that, but uh, the subnet mask is the same. So they're on the same network. <laughs> okay, so awesome. Let's get started. I'm going to select the plus sign and I'm going to select XHA. All right, so we'll start off with who is the active server? Uh, it, it may not matter. I mean, it, it, may, it may be dependent on the location. You may want your active server to be in a specific data center always, right? Uh, but for, for the purposes of uh, uh, disaster recovery, uh, your passive server is gonna be in a different data center or, or sorry, maybe not a different data center, but in a different, um, in a different hypervisor. So I'm going to select BDDS1 as the primary. I'm going to enter BlueCat, which is the default password for deployments. I'm going to select add for the passive server. The only other server I have available is BDDS2. So I'm going to select that. Again, I'm going to add BlueCat as the password for the deployment. Okay, so XHA IP address. So the IP address I enter here is going to be going to be assigned to the primary BDDS. Okay, so 168245. Random number here, eight. Okay. And this is an interesting note. If you were to manually break the XHA configuration, the VIP IP will be assigned to the primary BDDS on ETH0. So whatever the IP address is on this BDDS, until you clear XHA completely, the second I manually break XHA, the primary BDS, either it's the BDS1 at that moment or it's BDS2, which but whatever BDS is primary in the XHA configuration, if I were to manually break XHA, this IP address will be assigned to ETH0. Okay. And, and, and that's a good thing, but I thought that might be an interesting note, um, an important piece. Okay, XHA communication interface. I'm not really gonna go through this nor set it up, but it, it is a way of adding that backbone um, to prevent um, um, split brain scenarios. That's, that's truly the, the most important part of this. Okay, and then once you've done that, now I'm gonna deselect it because I'm not gonna set that up. And then I'm gonna hit add. Beautiful, so it's done now. As we can see, the icons changed a little bit. It's, it's one, it seems like it's one appliance at, at, at this moment. If I select the server, I can see a few different things. I can see services are enabled, um, which is 
which is true. If I select the down arrow here beside the name, I can go to view XHA status. There's a few different ways to view the status of an XHA, especially in the CLI, but in the GUI, I can see multiple different things. I can see that the versioning is the same. I can see the, the different IP, the management interface. I can see the service IP address, and that's the same because I haven't modified the management interface at all. Okay, that NetMask is the same, so we know it's on the same network. XHA backbone enabled is set to no. Okay, XHA status, I can see here BDDS1 is the active node and BDS2 is the passive node. Da data synchronization state is normal. Okay, local role, this is primary as it's active. This is secondary because this is passive. Okay, and then the peer roles are, are the opposite. And uh, local system state, normal, initializing. Peer system state, initializing, normal. All right, so congratulations. We set up XHA. Super, it wasn't super complicated at all, but it can get complex, especially when things don't break. Or, sorry, especially when things break, not when they don't break. So when to use XHA? First off, you're not going to configure every BDDS in your arsenal in an XHA config. It would be way too expensive. The use cases would be to set up an XHA for your more critical locations or server roles. Some examples would be the DNS master, slave servers, the DHCP primary in a multi failover configuration. The value of XHA, if the physical or virtual BDDSs of the primary fails, the passive BDDS will automatically be promoted to primary. X XHA uses a VIP. So if the primary, and a primary active BDDS fails, the passive server will respond to all query queries and or leases pointing to the same service IP. When patching the cluster, there will be zero downtime as the passive server is the is the BDS that gets patched. So when the passive server has completed its patch work, it will get promoted to the primary and the other BDS in the cluster will then get patched. Now the problems with XHA. First off, it adds complexity to your DDI environment and it's harder to manage when something goes south. The two BDDSs configured in XHA have to be on the same network and within close proximity. In some cases where the network is down or something bad occurs at the data center the BD, that the BDDSs are located, normally both are affected anyways. If the BDDS in XHA are also added to your scheduled, scheduled deployments list, you have to manually remove it from that list in certain cases to successfully upgrade and or patch. You can come across split brain scenarios where both servers are active or passive at the same time. You cannot use XHA and AnyCast together. There are known bugs in 9.4, 9.5 and 9.5 that cause XHA to break when being patched. You cannot have a physical and a virtual server in XHA. It has to be either two physical or two virtual BDDSs. And lastly, you're paying for an extra appliance that can cost a lot of moolah. Your OPEX will be much more in the long run. So let's talk about not having XHA. Okay, so if your virtual or physical BDS fails, there are multiple ways to remediate. In the example of a physical server, you can promote a new physical server in minutes within the GUI via disable and replace or via the BAM APIs. With a virtual BDS, you can stand up a new VM or utilize an existing virtual BDS very quickly via the disable and replace again option in the GUI or via BAM APIs as well. Without XHA, the service IP of ETH0 is what clients will point to for DNS and DHCP services. 
In case of a failure, failure, you can promote a new server and assign the new server the IP. When patching a non-XHA BDDS, and depending on the patch you're applying, it may be down for a period of time. Alternatives to XHA. Hypervisors are your friends. Let's start there. This day and age, most things are virtual. A lot of Fortune 500 companies are managing their services in the cloud and or moving it there as I speak. Are you still running the majority of your physical infrastructure on-prem because you feel more comfortable owning the hardware instead of leaving it to the virtualization team who doesn't give you full access and takes a very long time for someone on the team to get assigned to a task and complete it? I get it. I felt your pain. Let me ask you a question about your physical hardware and maintenance. Do you have same day support for your BDDS or next day? You know stuff always breaks on a Friday, so let's hope it's the same day. Okay, you have same day support, but you have to let the Dell technician on site to replace the hardware. There goes your weekend, and let's hope the physical servers, this, the physical server that's broken is a short distance away. If you are in the cloud or utilizing virtual hypervisors, awesome. As you know, there are multiple solutions to mitigate appliance failures. An example, vMotion with VMware does a great job. Either way, I hope this video was informative and I've provoked your thinking around XHA. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. I'm also pretty quick at responding to questions, so please don't hesitate, hesitate to ask as well. Talk to you later. Bye.